Hey guys, welcome to another Q&A session from the Rupert blog. The YouTube channel just reached 5,500 subscribers. Thank you guys so much for subscribing. If you haven't yet, please do. Uh, I also want to let you guys know about my new tutorial, Mixing in Reaper Volume 2. I'm mixing an epic post-rock song, and I'm taking you through from organizing the session up to mastering. It's a very dynamic song, and there's lots of elements. Uh, there's tons of drum tracks. It's real drums. There's no samples used. Thank you guys so much for buying the course. Uh, it's really the only way that I can afford to keep putting out tons of free videos and free content on my website. So your continued support uh, really helps everyone, helps the whole community. Thanks a lot. First question comes from John Burbank. Is there a way to have Reaper clear any tracks that are armed for recording when loading a session? I've had it happen a few times where I open a session to add some overdubs and then other tracks are already armed in the session. This is a good reason to use the SWS startup actions. These can be global or per project. You need to copy the action ID and then add it to the startup action options. And um, the one you're probably looking for is unarm all tracks for recording. Add that to your startup action. It will disarm all the tracks when you open the session. Another thing you can do is command control click on the record arm button and that will uh, disarm all other tracks. Next question comes from Jaff Music. I noticed that you're an Evernote user. Do you have any insights on ways we can incorporate Evernote into our home studio? I use Evernote to keep track of expenses uh, throughout the year. I also use it for mixing recalls, so any client notes goes, goes in there. I also leave notes for myself on the songs that I'm working on to see what stage of completion they're in. And you could also use it to keep track of techniques and things like that that you're trying, track your progress on learning various things. There's a lot of uses for it. One of the great things is that you can write something on your phone and have it appear on all of your other devices. All right, next question comes from Anduvax. How can I copy tracks with all the items and automation between projects? Saving a template is not a very quick solution. For this, I think it's a matter of choosing the correct copy action. There are a few different ones, and there's a few different paste ones. So I'll show you how I do it. Okay, so in this project, I want to copy this track and all these tracks, all the audio, this automation here, all the plugins and everything. I'm going to click on this track. It's a folder track. Press C, which is copy items slash track slash envelope points, depending on focus, ignoring time selection. And then I'm going to put it into a new tab and press V for paste items slash tracks. Pressing C to copy, new tab. Press V here. There we go, I've got all of my automation, all my items. And in the mixer, I've got all my effects. Double click on a track, it will select the item, not the track itself. It's whatever is last touched. So double clicking there and you're pressing C. And I go to a new tab again, I press V. That's only that audio item. It's not the track that was touched. I think it's a pretty simple thing. It might be that you're overthinking it, but I hope this helps. Germano Martins asks, could the new sub projects feature be a good way for mastering an album? where a change in the mixing stage is updated in the mastering session. You can use subprojects in this way, but I don't personally recommend it. Whenever I make a change to a mix, I always do a save as, add in a new version number. So there's always a history and I can always go back easily, but that won't work with subprojects because the project will have a different name and then that won't automatically update in your uh, mastering project. I think it can work, but I think it would actually be slower than just going back to the mixing session, making the changes, exporting it, and bringing it back in as a new take. That's how I do it. And the other thing is when you're done a mix, it's done, move on to mastering. And if you really have to go back, it's not that big of a deal to go back to the mix. I think using sub projects is really just going to slow you down more than anything. AH Music says, can you show your setup? I'm really jealous of your space. It looks so comfortable. Hey, thanks, man. It's a decent sized room and it is really comfortable. Uh, there's a lot of space to move around and uh, my desk is like really big, which is really nice from uh, my old place where it was, you know, like a really small bedroom size place. The only problem with this place is that it's really close to a busy street. 
there's tons of traffic noise right now and there's really nothing I can do about it. I've already like covered up all the windows with insulation plus drywall and plywood and then acoustic treatment on top of that. There's just really nothing I can do about the noise aside from moving. Yeah, so if you're hearing car noise in my videos, that's the reason. All right, guys, that's another five questions answered in this edition of the ReaperBlog Q&A. Doing another one at 6,000 subscribers, so put your comments and questions in the box below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and visit reaperblog.net for more tutorials.